I want to talk briefly about the toothpick gaze lab that you guys finished up last night. Um, making sure that we're all on the same page as far as what each of the pieces and parts of that lab represented. Um, when we did this activity, what did our hand represent? A hand was the enzyme, okay? And if the hand was the enzyme, where was the active site of that enzyme? Like two pages. Yeah, it was where I was actually grabbing the toothpick, right? Where the toothpick was binding to the enzyme. And so then the toothpick represented what? The substrate. The substrate, the thing that was actually being acted on by that enzyme, okay? And our product then was broken toothpicks, right? And so we were looking at the rate of how fast we can break toothpicks or how fast these enzymes could make the product that we were actually doing. Um, what happened with the rate as we had a buildup of the product, meaning we had a buildup of the broken toothpicks and less of the unbroken toothpicks. What happened to our rate? It decreased a little bit. Why do you suppose that is? Right, because the unreacted substrate was less and less easy to find, right? It was harder to find those unbroken toothpicks, and so it took longer to do that. So that's kind of one way an enzyme will regulate itself. If you have a surplus of the products around, it'll slow down the rate of the enzyme so that the enzyme doesn't kind of go out of control and is building more and more and more product that the cell doesn't need. Um, so that's one way of like a feedback inhibition, like meaning that oh, I've got too much product here, I'm gonna slow down now. All right, what happened to the reaction rate when we doubled the amount of enzyme? And how did we double that amount of enzyme? Yep, we used two hands. So the first one we used one hand, the second one we used two hands. And what happened when we doubled it? It increased, right? Do you think that it's the same with enzymes? Sure it is. I mean, it was a little bit biased of a, a lab. Um, probably didn't see the increase that you normally would because what's different about your hands? Were they equal? No, they're not. <laughs> uh, well, most people are not ambidextrous, so um, some people might have had a harder trouble um, breaking it with their non-dominant hand. Um, so we didn't have equal enzymes, but in reality, theoretically, you would have, if you doubled the amount of enzymes, you would have full functioning equal enzymes. Um, and so you'd see a higher rate increase from that. All right. What would happen if they made you, if we made you wear gloves or wear socks over your hands for this lab? Yeah, that rate would have went down a lot, right? Why do you think they're asking this question? What is it supposed to model in terms of the enzyme? Like a what? Exactly, like if the shape of the enzyme changed. And so if anything happens to the shape, because remember, it's so important, shape is function um, in so much of biology. And if we change that shape, it can't do the job that it needs to do anymore. So that was what that was meant to represent. If you put on gloves, obviously your enzymes can't work as well anymore. Same thing with an enzyme. If you change its shape, it can't work as fast or at all, um, depending on how much it changes its shape. Um, it's along the same lines, I didn't ask you this question, but what if um, these are my enzymes and I'm asked to break toothpicks and I've already got something in my active site. Is that gonna um, inhibit me from doing my job, and yeah, it's gonna be harder, right? So you can either change the shape of the enzyme and make it not work as well, or you can inhibit it by having something else bind there first, and now the toothpicks are blocked because there's already something bound there. So it kinda inhibits the function of that enzyme, okay? And what did you find in terms of the three things that can affect enzyme activity? Yeah, one of, I was going to say one of them we did in the lab. So pH can affect it. Temperature can affect it. 
and it's different with every enzyme, but every enzyme, think of enzymes as Goldilocks. It has a preferred perfect temperature and pH. And if you get too acidic or basic, or if you get too hot or cold, then the enzyme's not gonna work as well anymore, okay? It wants to be kind of right in its optimal sweet zone in order for it to work the way it wants to work. And then also with shape, if you change the shape of um, the enzyme, it's not gonna work. If you change the amount of the enzyme, you can speed up the reaction rates or you can slow it down by taking them away, okay? All right, so we're going to, today you're gonna to do an assignment on um, your textbook um, class. You're gonna do um, log into Mastering Biology and you should see a uh, assignment assigned to you. I think it says something like science skills, calculating, making a graph and calculating slope. Um, this is a, um, it's kind of like an FRQ, but not really. It's more about the science skills. It's more about the making of the graph um, and it has to do with enzymes. So this is a good time to practice that stuff. So you'll log into Mastering Bio and you'll see it assigned to you and you'll click on that and you'll be able to do that. Um, what else is due today is the cheese effect from yesterday. So if you didn't get that done, um, make sure that that gets done and turned in as well. Okay, any questions? Okay. <laughs>